I'm Judd Kratzer. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. And I'm probably one of the few people that has eaten fall fish. It's a, a large minnow species. In fact, it's the largest minnow species that's native to Vermont. Um, carp are also in the minnow family, but they're not native. Um, one of the reasons why fall fish are not eaten much is probably because they're very bony. People have thought of fall fish as trash fish. And in fact, one of the first things I read about fall fish when I was younger was in a magazine and it, it said that a guy tried to eat fall fish and he said it tasted like a wet paper bag with bones. And so that I kind of took that to be the truth and never thought about trying it uh, until um, I got probably when I was in graduate school and I was learning to be a fisheries biologist and I started to think about how um, in Europe uh, a lot of the popular fish that they target there are minnows which means that they have a similar bone structure so they've got a lot of bones and they eat those fish and in Asian cultures they seem to do a good job of finding ways to eat a lot of different species even ones that we might turn our noses up, up at in the United States. So I thought it was worth a try and then I, I looked on online a little bit and there were some guys in New Hampshire that were actually taking a challenge to basically catch and eat every species in New Hampshire and they had tried fall fish and said that it was good so I decided to try it myself. Um, and the main thing with eating fall fish is dealing with the bones. The, the meat is a, has a nice mild flavor but the main thing is dealing with the bones. And so the two main ways that I've dealt with the bones is to pickle it, um, and I'll show you some pickled fall fish in a little bit, and also to grind it. So we fillet it and then grind, grind the fillets, and then you can do lots of stuff with that. My favorite is to make fish cakes out of it and fry it. All right, so here's a nice specimen. Now this one was 17 and a half, so this was a master angler fish. All right, so let's uh, fillet this guy. We're just gonna start, there's a bone right around in here behind the gill, the gill plate, and we just wanna come in behind that, kind of at an angle so you kind of get under the scales. And you just, basically cut down until it stops and when it stops you're basically hitting the spine which would it takes a lot to cut through that especially on a big fish and then I'm just going to come in with just the point of the knife and I just want to come and run right down the back so just to the side of of, cent, of center and I'm just kind of getting through the skin at this point skin and knocking the scales off because that cutting through scales is dulls your knife and it's it's hard so then once we've got through the skin then we can come back in turning the, the blade at this angle and then you're trying to there's bones that run out of the spine and cut, come up towards the top of the fish and what I'm trying to do is cut just parallel to those and I'm cutting in there you can, my knife is only going in about to here because the top of the ribs run right about through here and I can feel that with my knife and so I'm, the tip of my knife is hitting that and I'm just cutting down and the, the ribs end about down here where the anus is but I'm just kind of going down through there and then I'm going to come back in here and I'm basically trying to kind of turn the blade and come up over the ribs. Now, it can be easier if you have, especially if you have an electric fillet knife, it might be easier to just cut through the ribs but uh, that's a good way to dull your knife. And so yeah, I'm just working it right down over the ribs, trying to get as much meat 
off of there as I can. Okay, so there's there these bones here are the ribs. And we just peeled the meat and skin off of that. And then I just come in here at the bottom of the fish, I'm basically just cutting through the skin on the bottom. And then you can just get your knife down and lay it parallel to the board and just run right out through here. You can just cut that off there or you can leave it so you have something to hold on to when you take the skin off. And one thing with bony fish that can be helpful to do is just to take your knife and just kind of cut right down along the center of the fish. That helps the meat to kind of lay so the skin can be flat because what you're going to do next is just take your knife and um, run it right between the skin and the meat to separate the meat from the skin. So. Now if you're going to pickle this, you would maybe cut it into some smaller chunks. But we're going to run this through the grinder so we'll just leave it as it is. Um, you can't really see the bones, but you can feel them. If you were just to run your finger, you can feel all the little bones, extra bones that are in minnows and suckers that are not in bass and trout. And then we'll turn it over and do the other side. All right, so we've got our meat from just two fall fish. That's a pretty good amount of meat. Um, good looking meat too. What I would normally do before I would grind it would be to uh, soak it in some salt water just to help firm it up. Um, but we don't have time to do that. So we just filleted these and we're gonna run them through the grinder. I'm just gonna set these over here. And this is on the fine setting on the grinder. And pretty simple, just drop it in there. And the machine basically does all the work. You may need to push some down through. And so what that's doing is it's cutting the meat and the bones into tiny little pieces. It kind of looks like strings, but it's really little tiny chunks of meat and really little pieces of bone. So small that you can't notice it. All right, then there's the ground fall fish ready for whatever you want to do with it. We're going to make some fish cakes. And there's lots of different fish cake recipes out there. Uh, mostly they're pretty simple. Um, the recipe we're going to use has some mashed potatoes and some breadcrumbs and a little bit of seasoning in it. So here we have our freshly ground fall fish. And this is some of the uh, fish cake uh, mixture that I mixed up earlier. So this has um, there's a, roughly a pound of, of fall fish in there. And the recipe is in here. Uh, uh, in On the Water magazine is an article that I wrote. Um, this was in 2016, March 2016. And I just brought this along because it is an easy way for me to remember what's in here. Basically I mashed up two medium potatoes. There's um, about a cup of breadcrumbs in here. There's some fresh Par there's parsley, you can put Parmesan cheese, um, you could use garlic cloves or I used some uh, garlic powder, um, and then some salt, pepper, and two eggs, and you just mix it up. The main thing is I, I usually don't put all of the breadcrumbs in right away. I put 
a lot of it in and then kind of mix it. You want to get it to the right consistency where you can form something that's going to be, you know, like a, a, a Play-Doh consistency, basically, so you can, something you can really hold on to that's not just going to stick to your hand. Um, because what you're going to do is you're going to pick that up, make little patties out of it, and throw it into hot oil. All right, so we're going to fry up some fall fish cakes. When you're frying fish, the right temperature is usually about 350 degrees, um, which I'm not checking, but what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of our fall fish, and instead of making a patty, I'll make a little ball. You can do whatever you want. You can make balls with all of them. And that's about, that's about right, that amount of bubbling. So I'm just going to start making some more patties. You want to try to make them about the same thickness so that they cook at the same rate, the center and the edges. The thinner they are, the quicker they'll cook. So you can see I'm just forming them and dropping them in. It doesn't take long. So by the time you get your last one in there, you want to just kind of take a look. Look at the color. That one's probably about right. Just putting them on paper towels to let them let some of the oil soak off. It looks and smells good. All right, and there's uh, the first batch of fish cakes. All right, here's our finished fall fish cakes. And just, take, I'll just show you the inside so you can see what they look like on the inside. Uh, there's little chunks of potato there. Most of the white stuff in there is, is fish, some herbs. Um, not sure if you can tell, but you don't see any bones, don't feel any bones, and you won't feel them in your mouth either. Moment of truth. First time uh -huh. eating fall fish. Yeah. All right, I'll go for a small one. Oh wow, that's good. The mm -hmm. potatoes in it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's kind of like a hash brown, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, would you typically eat them with any type of um, sauce or dip or anything? Yeah, so I didn't make any sauce because I wanted to just, you know, experience the flavor of the fall fish, but with these are even better with some kind of a dipping sauce, yeah. for sure. Um, and you don't taste any fishiness at all. Right. It's, uh, yeah. It's and very I mild. can't detect any bones. That was my biggest concern when you're telling me about it. But I've never ground fish before, so it's very interesting, mm -hmm. very tasty. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what to compare this to because I'm I'm not sure I've ever had fish with the potato mixed in. Mm -hmm. But this is as good as any fish I've white fish that I've had fried before. I would mm -hmm. say so. Yeah. I mean, this is fantastic. I've taken this to potlucks and. Kids that wouldn't eat fish thought it was chicken. They thought they were chicken nuggets, and yeah. they, they were just scarfing them down until yeah. I told them they were fish. But um, <laughs> that's very messed up. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, I mean it's very. There's nothing strong about this whatsoever. It's it's the perfect medium for just picking up all the herbs that you put in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna really hash browns keeps coming to mind to me, <laughs> but I love hash browns. So mm -hmm. um, wow, those are really quite good. Let me have another one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.